Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. Hello everyone, welcome back to Off. I just solved this puzzle. Partially because of me and partially because of a hint. I spent about, um... About 25 minutes, actually. Just, just working at this puzzle, chipping away at it, and making no progress whatsoever. I just kept looking at... The picture I took of the card and looking at the symbols and trying to figure out what it meant to what it meant you know I was trying to figure out what about this information would tell me which ones I needed to press and because they face four different directions the symbols on the card I was thinking maybe it's supposed to be like a you need to activate them in a certain order sort of thing so I was trying to find a pathway through these differently facing little symbols that would take me through all of them but nope that didn't work and I just spent a bunch of other time just going around and finally thought, okay, it's been like a half hour, I should probably just get a hint. So I went on the forums and the hint was that you need to pay special attention to the two symbols that are next to the card and also up here, as you can see on the wall. And that's when I realized, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to activate the pressure plates that correspond to the symbols on the card that are these two symbols. Although I have to say that could have been made clearer because the symbols actually don't look very much like the ones on the card at all. In fact, they just barely resemble it. I'm, I'm literally looking at a picture of the card right now. A picture with a camera that I took and I'm staring at the symbols and this doesn't really look like it. In fact, even though I was pretty sure the answer was to correspond these symbols to the card and then correspond the card to the pressure plates, I actually entered them in the wrong ones. I entered in the reverse of what the right ones were because these symbols are so misleading. They honestly barely resemble the ones on the card. But they kind of do. Kinda. Not really. But anyway, yes. I, I did it partially. I partially solved it myself and partially solved it thanks to a hint. Okay. Now that's done and now we have a number. 5865. And I have a fresh sheet of paper here with which to take notes. And I imagine I need to take that number to the gigantic person who apparently likes non-random random numbers. Actually, where's the person? I think they're over here. No. I think the person's back in zone one. Well, it's not zone. Uh, block one or whatever it is. It doesn't even have a name. Yeah, here we go. Hi. How you doing? 5865. Five. Bravo. That's perfect. Here, take this. You've done well. Sagittarius card has been found. Uh... What do I do with the Sagittarius card? Permits access to the room again. What? Permits access to the room again. I, I don't understand. Should I go to zone or block three? Is it saying if I leave the room and come back, stuff will be different? Maybe I can get through the mysterious upside down doorway now? I mean, nothing's ax uh, asked for, whoa. Oh, I'm flipping around now. That is so cool. Uh, wait, what? But... I don't have a code. What would the code be? Alright, let's see which, which one needs to be activated first. 
Okay, it's three. Um. Oh, I know what it is. It must be the code that you find right next to the person, the gigantic person. Where you solve that little, like, ball, ball falling into the whole puzzle, and it gives you a number, and you give the number to the person, but it doesn't work. That's the only unused number I have. 3755. So let's try. That's three. Seven. Yeah. Five. Five. Mm-hmm. Now what? What does that... What does that do? Oh, I guess it makes everything right side up. Today, Papa gave me a comic. But I want to go out and play. I hate this place. I'm sure Mom will pick me up. Chapter 2. Boxer's Adventures Who's Boxer? That's the same symbol that was on the ground in one of the other blocks, but before it was like lava and it hurt you when you walked on it, but this one doesn't. It's, it's deactivated, it's safe. Oh, I can't use the computers. Is that a book? It's an old comic. Read it? No, 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 no. It's inanimate. I guess I have to. Uh... Panic in... Ballville? What is happening? I guess we're inside of the comic. Boxer, what a beautiful day. Ballville is peaceful today. Let's hope that nothing will ruin that sweet blue color in this wonderful sky. Ball man. <laughs> You're forgetting my diabolical genius. And my new invention, the cloning machine. I filled Ballville with clones of my evil self. There's no way to stop us now, Boxer. And I've also kidnapped your little girlfriend. Oh no. Maybe it isn't such a good day after all. <laughs> Sounds like it isn't. Mission number 64. Clean Ballville of all the evil Ballman clones. Quick. Ooh la la, what a mess. I'd better hurry. What the hell? Here we go, what the? Oh, this is, wow, this is weird. This is really interesting. Uh, apparently I have 8,000 hit points? Holy crap. What competencies do I have? Holy shit! Punch, power, bomb. Ooh, attacks multiple enemies, yes please. Kablamo. Adversaries purified. Belil's meat received. Do I have to actually kill them, or can I just leave? Like, can I just go into a different lane so I don't have to fight them? They're facing the- oh, there we go. They're facing the opposite way. I was about to say, you might want to face me if you're going to fight me. Man, they do a lot of damage. Come on, Bowman. I have 666 competency points. I love the music. So, holy shit! Zounds, this is a real invasion. <laughs> this is your end, boxer. You... Buttocks Avenger? What? Is that supposed to be an insult? It doesn't sound like one. Okay. Definitely gonna be using a bomb here. This is gonna hurt. Ah, 
Ah. This task is even impossible for a superhero. You have no chance to succeed. No, Daisy. This is really stupid. <laughs> Isn't that your comic? Do you think your own comic is stupid? Why'd you buy it then? Why'd you ask for it? Or, well, I mean, I guess it was a gift. You did say you wanted to play outside instead of reading a comic, right? Today, Mom finally picked me up. Uh, hi. The end is near, my friend. I believe what's floating behind you is the final save block. Perhaps it would be wise to record your progress one last time. Before you enter that door. And face the Queen. Alas, the time has come for you to spend the golden fruits of your carnage. Okay, I guess we're gonna buy the best stuff we can. What's holy shit? Aura of Lunacy. Well, offensive equipment is definitely more important than defensive. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Grand Brachial? Brachial? A bizarre object associated with meat. What does that even mean, associated with meat? I don't know what that means. But what does it do? See, I want to buy that and the bat. And actually, I can. Yeah. Okay. Let's buy that and let's buy myself a... Cat... Cat... Sahiro? Bat? By the way, are these bats named after real batters or something? Like... I don't know anything about baseball. Is that named after a well-known batter? I, I don't know. And now I'm poor. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not even going to try. Okay, how much damage does that thing do? A ton more. Now, what did I just buy? The thing associated with meat. I can't equip it. So it must be something I use, right? Right? Yeah, a bizarre object associated with meat. I guess I can maybe use it during a fight? Actually, maybe I can, maybe I can equip it on an add-on. Nope. Hmm. Wonder what it does. Are you sure you want to enter? Yes. Chapter 1. The Queen. It's interesting that it's going backwards in chapters from chapter 5 to chapter 1. The ominous hallway. The ominous stairway. The first thing she said was, You are finally here, Batter. The wait for your arrival has been a long one. But your way was in vain. You will do naught but raise trouble here. Return home. Always keeping his icy assurance, the batter said, That's what I did. This here is the cradle of my father. Your guardians have fallen. You're now the queen of a kingdom that no longer exists. Surprised, but not at all taken aback, she asked, Why have you destroyed the nation that I have rebuilt? The answer was simple. You've never been in this place to do even the slightest thing. Your role was to take care of him. You have failed your task. Now, because of you, I must complete my sacred mission. Continually withstanding the attacks that the batter had brought into the monotonous dialogue between them, the queen called a spade a spade. 
I have done all this for him. I truly wish for my children to be happy. We were so busy preparing the birthday party that we forgot who it was for. This response eradicated the patience of the queen. You have ruined the carnival, batter. I will not let you lay a hand on the son we have brought into the world. Today, you will fall. Here we go. Let's examine her first, although I'm sure, as always, it will do nothing. Yep, the queen. Fourth boss. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, those are add-ons. Royal add-ons, Delta, Sigma, and Epsilon. You've been wrong since the beginning. Let's go for auto in this one. Okay, switch back to attack. That's just to get some fast attacks out. Okay, I don't even remember what my competencies are anymore. Uh, where's my big one? Special home run, there we go. I'm gravely disappointed. I think it's very powerful against so many enemies. Long chain. Yeah, long chain. There we go. That's a big one. Ooh, 300. Come on, we gotta kill these add ons so she stops doing so much damage to us. No dessert for you. <laughs> there we go. One add on down. Nope, not attack. I'm gravely disappointed. It's like all the things a parent would say that would disappoint a child. I'm disappointed in you. No dessert. Man, these other add-ons are really powerful. Health-wise, well, that one's gone at least. They're actually not doing that much damage. Okay, there we go. Now we can just focus on her. Be disappointed in me all you want. I'm going to defeat you. Okay, I need to um, heal. Which is the heal? This one, save second base. Heal Omega. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna save Epsilon's CP because there's no use no use in using the AoEs. Have you filled your life with beauty? Uh nope. Nah, I'm just gonna do normal attack with Epsilon. The AoE is basically useless. Let's heal Alpha. Furious home run. Actually, no. Uh, what was the one? Special home run? Yeah. It's the biggest one I have. Alright, we got this. We got this. There's nothing but the void after me. That long chain is such a powerful attack. You've been wrong since the beginning. That wouldn't surprise me, honestly. My entire mission of purification is shady at best. It's suspect. It doesn't seem right. Oh, there we go. 
Alpha level 16. Omega level 16. And that was very irresponsible on your part, Batter. I even made a big cake for the party tonight. Do you want some coffee, my love? Queen of the Flies, it's time to join your disciples. It all went wrong. Time to forget about it and dream sweet dreams. Look, he has your eyes. They're full of fear. Where am I now? This looks like the room. The room I kept seeing every time I defeated a guardian. The whole red color scheme. Ch oh, chapter zero. The batter. Another om ominous red hallway. There's nothing here. Yeah, this is the room. I'm here. Am I gonna fight you? I have to fight you? Uh... I... But I don't want to. You just, you just look like a scared little sick kid or something. Now I want to examine you. Hugo, a little boy. Look, it's not even attacking me. What the? Hold on, hold on, can I flee? I can't flee. I have to kill him? Why would I want to kill a little boy? I have to. I can't flee. Either through the left thing, which seems to never work, or from over here. I still don't know what row means. I, I guess I have to. Okay. Here we go. This is not even attacking me. This is just sad. Adversaries purified. Batter level 17, yay! I'm scared of the dark. From now on, there will be no more darkness. Did I do a good thing? It doesn't feel like it. Stop right there, you imposter. What? I must say that I had placed the blindest of confidences, the solidest of hopes, and the most sincere belief in you. We can well say that I have erred to the bone. But the real betrayer is rather the one who lies beyond the eye of the cat. What have you done, Sam? I did what you forced me to do, game. To answer your question literally, you fourth wall breaking text. Is the opaque mist of the... ...cineristic frame really your excuse for killing wife and child? You have not purified this place. You have destroyed, eradicated it. You have immersed it into a pristine nothingness. It's better like that. I should not have lent you my hand. 
I should have detected the black flame that consumed your soul from the beginning. Sam, join me. Expiate this, I don't even know what that word means, the sins with me that we are guilty of by preventing this monster from completing his work. Don't do that. I need you in order to purify this world. The time has now come to render your final and futile judgment. <laughs> what? The batter official ending. Special ending. Uh... Is this a trick or what? Hmm. This is very, very strange. Special ending or the special ending? In what way is it special? Let's go with the official ending. Too bad for you, Sam. You will die in control of your evil marionette. It is time for you to wave goodbye to what little you have left of your existence. I have to actually fight you. We're back to the beginning, when I was play fighting you. But now it's for real. Okay, we'll see what happens. Let's see how strong you actually are. Final boss, the judge, Pablo. Feline Avenger. <laughs> you don't look very strong, to be frank. Alright, Omega's poisoned and is taking a shit ton of damage. This is bad. There we go, geared. Now I need to heal him. Save second base. Omega, there you go. Let's heal you again. Let's, yeah, let's heal you, heal you again. Oh, and you're poisoned again. Great. wasn't very hard. I expected more of a fight from the judge. This. It's over. Escaping from your purpose is impossible. Nothing to do but pull the lever, I suppose. What if I go back down? Nah, it's not going to go anywhere. The switch is now on off. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow plays in the background. Produced by Mortis Ghost. Okay, now let's be honest here. I can't possibly end without trying the special ending. I mean, I can't, right? I have to. So. Let's go 
do that. Yeah, these credits will play again. When I finish it again, I'm sure. So I'm going to go do that. Try the different ending. And I will be right back when I'm at the beginning of the other ending. Alright, we are back here. Let's try this again. With a different option. The time has now come to render your final and futile judgment. Alright, first did the official ending. Now let's do the special ending. The judge. We're going to side with the judge. The choice, that choice was, even though pathetically useless, I think, the right one. And now, batter. Taste our... Ravankist thirst for justice of no avail. Oh! Now I'm fighting myself, and holy crap, I have turned into something very terrifying. What the hell am I? Okay, uh, we get to see what kind of special attacks the judge has. Cool. What have you got? Oh my god, what do I use? Here we go. Aneurysm rapture. Rupture. A thousand damage, holy shit! Let's just keep doing that. Holy crap, that was easy. Wait, if you had aneurysm rupture, why didn't you use it on me when I defeated you, or tried to defeat you the first time? You would have killed me in like two hits. Strange. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining about the combat being easier when I was fighting as the opponent, or as the... Uh, you know what I mean. Your demented crusade ends here. Die, batter, with the eternal souvenir of not having conducted your sad scheme to its end. It's too late. Everything is lost. I know, but I prefer this over your victory. Hence, nothing remains, except for our regrets. Except for our regrets. And we're back to the ending. So it's pretty much the same either way. All the damage has already been done. Is there any way to avoid the damage? I doubt it. Maybe, though. This game is certainly full of special things you can do. Maybe there's some crazy endings, some special pathways through the game that you can do to avoid... killing the Guardians? Maybe? I doubt it. I'll check it out, though. I'll read the thread and see... Oh, this is new. Hmm. Is it is the whole ending interspersed with scenes of the judge? I uh I sat through the entire credits for the original ending, by the way, just to see if there's any special scenes at the end, and there was not, just in case you're wondering. Okay, is there more? More scenes of the judge? Now I'm really curious. Huh? Huh? Oh, there we go. I guess the judge is just going through the world that has now been purified and turned into nothing. Everything erased. Blank. Dead. Yep. That's my purification. Okay, well, let's um, dig into it. I'm going to analyze it a bit, think about it a bit, and see if I can... See if I can manage to have any coherent thoughts about this game, because it's very strange. Yeah. The Void. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Alright. So. There's a lot to talk about. It's obviously very strange. It's a very strange game, and I love that about it. It also makes it hard for me to have any coherent thoughts about, like, the story, for example, but... Let's just start with the art. I really like the art. It's obviously very simplistic. And low fidelity, but that's perfectly fine. The art design... was very well executed. Just everything had this very strange look to it. 
all these solid colors. And then, and then when you get to all the specters, they're all so disturbing and demented and twisted looking. Alright, so that was the last scene, I guess. The one with the, the judge going through the void of nothingness. And that's it. There's nothing left. That's depressing as all hell. Okay, back to the art. So yes, the art design was great. So disturbing, really, just really disturbing. Everything just seemed off. Everything from the architecture, which just seemed too, too blocky and too big and just strange and inhuman. You know, I just kept thinking no one would build architecture like this. This doesn't make sense. Which just adds to the strangeness of it. And again, the creepiness of the specters. They're just so demented and twisted. And everybody kept turning into those strange looking. They kept turn, turning into terrible forms of themselves. When you went to fight them, even myself, even the batter, when, when the judge was fighting the batter and I was taking the judge's side, I turned into some horrible specter thing. And all of the workers that I kept fighting, the ones with the sugar deprivation and all of that, they kept also turning into strange forms that doesn't resemble their... that barely resembles what they normally look like. It's just very strange. Everything is twisted and sickly. I really like that. Uh, the music is very good. Once again, strange. Everything in this game is strange. And that is perfect. It perfectly fit it. Just bizarre. And weird and good. Just good. It fitted perfectly. Let's see, um... The puzzles were... were very good. They really were. Normally it's the puzzles. In any kind of an adventure-like game, and this is kind of like an adventure game, sort of. Um, the puzzles are always something that really tends to... I really tend to have a problem with the puzzles in games that are very puzzle-based, and this game is definitely very puzzle-based. A lot of puzzles, everywhere. But they were actually very good. I'm very pleasantly surprised. Almost every single one was good and made sense. I think there's only one that I really had a problem with. And that was the one where you have the... the stamped... what was it? The stamped poster or something like that? And you needed to figure out where to walk inside of that place? I think it was in Zone 3. And if you walked into the wrong spot, you would fight some specters and you'd be teleported out. I think that was the only one I had a problem with, because even knowing the solution, even finding finding out the solution, it it didn't make any sense. Like, there doesn't seem to be any logical reason for that to have been the solution. To go from black one to green one. I, I don't see the internal consistency. I don't see the logic. It just seems random, basically. I don't know, that one was weird. But that's the, that's literally the only one I can think of. All the others were perfectly fine. I mean, I guess if I wanted to be nitpicky, I guess the one with the, the puzzle near the end with the card and the different symbols, I guess the symbols on the wall could have been a much closer match to the ones that are on the card to make it clear that they were the same. Because they honestly looked different to me. They looked like very different symbols. But that's, that's a small thing. Overall, the puzzles were just very good. They're strange. They're all abstract. But, in a, in a very realistic adventure game that was set in the real world, that would be a problem, of course. Abstract puzzles that don't really have any connection to what's happening. But in this case, the entire game is abstract. And strange. So the puzzles totally worked. They, they had their own internal consistency. And I like the fact that you had these recurring puzzles that were kind of based around the same idea. That is, the idea of the blocks that float, and you touch them in a certain order. And you need to use numbers. You have to get numbers from a bunch of different sources to try to figure out exactly which order to press them in. So, so that central idea kept popping up. You know, you have a bunch of boxes, you need some numbers to figure out which order to press them in. But the way that you derived the order to press them in kept changing. At first it was really simple. It simply tells you on the wall. You know, one, two, three, four. That was the first one. One, two, three, four. Simple. And then, and then you get one where you have to press a block multiple times. So it's a little bit changed. And then you have ones 
where you need to figure out what the order of the numbers actually is. Like, for example, when I was swimming, or not swimming, but taking the pedalo through the fountains or the rivers of meat, and I wrote down all the numbers that were appearing on the side of the channels. And the, the order that you needed to do the numbers in was not the order that you encountered them in. You know, you had to, you had to figure out the numbers and what order they were supposed to be in. That was interesting. Then you had the one where the numbers were, or the, I think it was the boxes were upside down. So you had to do the numbers in reverse, sort of. Like, it's just, it's a central idea that kept reoccurring, but it was different every time. I really like that. So yeah, the puzzles were very good. Okay, let's... Let's address the elephant in the room. Which is the combat. That is... Thankfully, it's the only major problem I think the game has, but... It, it was a really major problem. The combat is... It's bad. The combat... Just... Was really bad. It is mind-numbing, and repetitive, and tedious, and not even really challenging whatsoever. Look, when you can press the auto button and have the computer fight for you, and that is more enjoyable than fighting yourself, that's when you know there's something wrong with your combat. It was honestly more enjoyable to press auto and just let it finish because... The combat wasn't fun, it, it wasn't interesting, it was just tedious. I just wanted it to end, it's like, oh great, I have to fight another thing. I have to get through this to get to the part of the game I actually like. Which wouldn't have been a huge issue if the combat wasn't so frequent, but it is. Especially, it's, it's especially frustrating when you're trying to solve a puzzle that requires you to go back and forth. For example, in the library when I was trying to find all the different pages, and finding all the torn out pages and put them in the correct book, which requires you to go from book to book to find which one you need to put it into. And you can only hold one page at one time. That requires you to go back and forth a lot. So you're trying to solve this puzzle. You know, the puzzle itself is interesting. I liked it. And I'm thinking about this puzzle and I'm thinking, okay, maybe this book, maybe... And then like mid-thought, boom, there's another combat scene. It's like, oh God, not again. Fight it. And then you go back to thinking about the puzzle. Ooh. Ooh, oh, this works. Oh, yeah, that works. Take another page, take a couple more steps, and oh, combat again. Oh, God. Like, it just kept interrupting the, the fun of solving the puzzles. It was just tedious. It really was not good. It really wasn't challenging at all. It was repetitive. It, it wasn't interesting. The special abilities are damn near useless. Basically, it's just use your heal on your allies use your most powerful attack, and then occasionally use the Cure Poison when you need to. And that's basically it. Most of the, abil most of the abilities were just boring and uninteresting. It's just, yeah, the, the combat just really wasn't good. It really drug... drug? Is that a word? Dragged? It really dragged the game down. Um, a lot. It's, it, I mean, it wasn't enough to ruin it by any means. I still really like the game. But I think it definitely would have been a better experience, a much better experience, without the tedium of the combat. As for how to improve it, I don't know. Like, would, could this game work without combat? I honestly don't know if it could. Because so much of what you're doing in the game, your core... Like, half of your core actions... Well, I, I guess the very core of the game is to purify the world, or, you know, purify, with air quotes there. So you need to... you need to be fighting these specters, because that is what you're doing. You're purifying them. You're killing them. And that requires combat. So could could the game work without combat? I don't know. But it certainly could have done with at least a much better combat system. And certainly less frequent. Definitely less frequent. So yeah, that, that's the elephant in the room for me about this game. That's the one major flaw that I see in it. It's just the combat is not good, and it's tedious. And it was pretty frustrating. I just felt like I was wasting my time, honestly. It was just a... It was just a block... in my way. It was just a blockade in front of me that I had to... beat down... slowly and tediously... to get to the rest of the game. The good parts. Let's see, what else? Well, in terms of the story... it's... it's one of those games that's not... 
it's not concrete enough for me to be able to tell exactly what's going on. There's some definite themes, like... For example, the the central idea of the game is that you're purif purifying the world, and... Right from the outset, I was thinking, am I really purifying the world? Am I really on a holy mission? Is this a good mission? Am I actually making the world better? And it looks like you're not. Which is exactly what I kind of suspected. It seemed very suspicious that you're on this holy crusade, and there's so little information as to what you're actually doing and why. It's just very strange. But, as for exactly what's happening, exactly who the batter is, and exactly what all these characters represented, I don't know, it seems like... It seems like Deaden, the guardian of the first zone, was your father. And, obviously, your... I guess your mother was there, and... Y when you went into the room, it's like you were entering your own mind. And it seems like the kid that you killed was maybe you? And there were some hints about being forced to take pills because you were sick, and being forced to stay inside instead of going out. So, what is this story really about? I don't know, I suspect it takes place in... the mind of a sick kid, maybe? A fantasy of sorts? But what is everything supposed to represent? I, I don't know. I'm bad at putting stories together. I'm sure there's some people that have done some good analyses of the story, and probably come up with some good interpretations, but... I can't come up with one off the top of my head, I don't know. There's themes, and there's things about... that I can pick out. The Holy Mission is bullshit, he wasn't actually helping anyone. I think the kid was maybe him. I think the whole thing was a fantasy, of sorts. Obviously, a lot of the characters represent people around him. His dad, his mother. The gigantic guy who bakes cakes, I'm not sure who that was supposed to be, maybe just a friend. The judge? Who was the judge? I don't know. So yeah, I have no concrete interpretation of the story, that's for sure. What else? Oh yeah, um, one interesting thing. Which isn't really so much a... a complaint, or a flaw, but just something that I find really interesting. And don't quite get, is... the, the sort, sort of the reveal at the end of the game... is that your holy mission to purify the world was actually bad and you've been hurting everything by just wiping it clean and making everything dead and featureless and then the game actually starts addressing you the player directly saying like what have you done you know you killed a child does the fact that it's happening inside of a game and the game expected you to do it does that excuse your actions that brings up a really interesting problem and that is, I guess, sort of the concept or the the player's feeling of ownership over their actions in a game. Here's what I thought when that scene first happened, when it was revealed. I mean, I kind of already kind of already knew it, but when it was definitely revealed that you had been doing bad, and then and that you had just killed a child, which I didn't want to do. I mean, you saw, I I didn't want to kill the child. I tried to flee. I tried to wait. I tried to find something to do to avoid killing it. But no, I had to kill him. I had to. Literally. And when that scene first happened where it was revealed and the game kind of accused you of doing something bad, you know, what the hell were you thinking? I... Honestly, I didn't feel bad about what I had done. And the reason for that is because I felt no ownership over my actions. And the reason for that is because the game literally forced me to do that. Kill the child. I tried not to. I couldn't. I couldn't avoid it. It was impossible to avoid it. I couldn't have even gone to the menu and pressed exit, because it doesn't even allow you to do that when you're in the combat menu. I, I would have had to literally just close the game by, you know, control alt delete or just Xing out. The game forced me. If I wanted to continue in the game, I had to. Because of that, I don't feel any ownership over my actions. And as far as I know, it's the same with the Spectres. I don't think you can avoid killing the Spectres. You need to kill the Guardians to get the key cards to get to the next zones. So, you know, I didn't really want to kill a lot of the things I kept fighting. I just had to. The game forced it upon me. So I don't... I honestly don't feel any ownership over, over my actions because it wasn't a choice. My only choice was to continue playing the game. 
but I had no choice as to whether I should do those actions or not once within the game. So that created an interesting disconnect between me and the character. Or me and... Or me and the game's concept of me. It kind of accused me, the player, of doing something. And I thought, no, I, I didn't do it. I mean, literally speaking, I did. But I don't feel any ownership over it. So I don't feel bad for it. That's an interesting problem. I honestly have no idea how you get around that. I know there's another game that came out kind of recently called... What is it called? Spec Ops The Line, I believe. Which kind of has a similar... Sort of problem. I've actually never played it, but I've, I've heard about it. And I believe it has the same sort of problem. Um, I, I guess to avoid spoilers, I won't say any more about it. But yeah, I believe Spec Ops The Line has the same sort of problem. And it's an interesting problem. If your entire game is based around sort of this core idea of the main action that you're doing within the game, in this case, killing the specters and purifying the world. When the main action and your main goal in the game is to do something that is actually wrong, how do you... how do you make that matter to the player? You're trying to make the player feel ownership for it. You're trying to make the player, I guess, reflect in on themselves and say, like, why did I just do this? But how do you make the player feel ownership? In this case, I didn't feel any because I tried not to and the game didn't allow me to. So then, of course, you could just offer the option. Offer the option to the player of whether to do it or not. But then if they choose not to, then you can't have that ending and then maybe what you're going for in the story doesn't happen. You'd have to have a completely different ending. So I, I don't even know how that would work. I, I don't know. It's a really interesting design problem. I mean, what do you do? You either don't give the player choice. If you don't give the player choice, you can force them down a certain pathway and get the exact story that you want. But then the player probably, at least in my case, won't feel any ownership over their actions because, again, you were forced and you didn't choose it. If you, gave, if you give players the choice, then what ends up happening... It just kind of diverges. You'd have to make multiple endings, and then it might not even be the story that you wanted to tell. I, I don't know. It didn't... That didn't hurt... I don't think that hurt my enjoyment of the game at all. I just found it a bit strange that it seemed to think I should feel bad for something, and I just... I don't. I don't feel bad for it at all. I killed a child. I know that. I didn't want to. I had to. Unless I close the game, but, I mean, it's a game. It's, it's already programmed in there. It's not as if the child would have lived if I didn't play the game. I mean, within the game's files, the, the child is both alive and dead. In the code, if you know what I mean. Maybe I'm getting kind of philosophical here. I don't know. It's getting meta or something. So yeah, that was just interesting. Just an interesting thing to think about. So is there anything else? I don't know. Yeah, overall, it's just a really good game. It was hurt a lot by the really bad combat, but other than that, it's just damn good. Great puzzles, great art. Strange in such a fascinating way, great music. It's just really good and strange. So strange, but I love it. I like strange things. Things that are different. It's really nice to have something that's different. Because a lot of games are just so derivative. And it's the same with any art. And, you know, a lot of movies, a lot of books are just derivative. So when you have something that's just so very different, it's refreshing. It's nice. So yeah, props to the developers for making this game. It's... I think it lasted me somewhere, depending on whether you consider the stuff I cut out or not. I think it lasted me between 8 and 10 hours. So we're talking like a full-length game here, for free. That's amazing. That's really astounding. So major props to the developers for making this. And props to the, the translators that translated it to English so that I can actually play it. Yeah, props to everyone involved. Very, really awesome what they've made here. Alright, I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of Off.